Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we're gonna be building off of the intercooler project we did a couple weeks ago. So, when we installed the intercooler, we obviously allowed more air to flow through that larger intercooler to increase heat transfer. Now what we're gonna be doing is replacing the factory hot and cold pipes with more efficient flowing pipes. So they're gonna be mandrel bent, larger. They're just gonna give us an overall more efficient setup for those turbos, getting that hot air from the turbos through the intercooler and then getting that nice cold air that came out of the intercooler into our throttle body. So anyway, what we're looking at here is the hot and cold pipes from CV Fabrication. Uh, everything that comes in the kit should make this about as turnkey and plug and play as possible. You obviously get all the pipes that you need for each side. So the hot side is on passenger and driver side of the turbos. You get the plumbing for that, couplers, all the band clamps you need to support that. Then on the cold side, you get the cold side pipe that comes out of the driver's side of the intercooler. You also get that special coupling uh, connector here that's going to attach to the intercooler with that factory spring clip. Uh, and then obviously all the other peripherals that you need to install everything. Now, I personally love projects like this because it's like a big puzzle. Uh, so I spent the last couple of days just kind of messing around with it because there wasn't a diagram in the box to show what pipe went where. But if you start looking at the factory pipes and then you just start looking at the bends on the CV fab one, everything kind of makes sense. So as far as install, tools is pretty simple. Ratchet, sockets, obviously you could be dealing with a lot of band clamps. One thing I will say is before you even dive into this, make sure you get some silicone grease. There is an O-ring on this coupling that goes from the pipe into the intercooler, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you grease that O-ring on there so you're not raw dogging that bad boy into the intercooler so it eventually corrodes down the road. As far as install, let's get the ladder here. Here is what I'm thinking. So here's our engine bay. I'm gonna take off this Y pipe just to get everything out of the way. Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna undo the negative battery cable on the battery. Then I'm gonna take this Y pipe off just to free up access to the hot pipe on the driver's side. I think that's gonna be the first one we tackle. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way from the pipe to the turbo side of it, all the way down to the intercooler side of things and just loosening up all the band clamps so that I could pull things out carefully. Um, that's a pretty big pipe. So that pipe sort of looks like this guy. So it's gonna be snaked around here. So we're just gonna to have to make sure we don't snag anything. But like I said, I'm gonna start with that pipe. Then we have right here, you can see down in the middle, the cold pipe going into our throttle body. We got to remove that one. And then we have this other pipe on the passenger side. That's our other hot pipe. So all right, with that Y pipe out of the way, it does give you a really good clean shot at the driver's side hot pipe there. But we're going to hold off on that for a second because I'm looking at it and it snakes through a whole bunch of tubing and everything in front of the engine. And what I'm going to do is focus on the cold side pipe. So that's the one with the sensor here. So this is the, this goes from the throttle body into the largest port on the intercooler, which has a spring clip on the bottom. So we're gonna undo the top here, and then we'll go underneath the truck. I'll show you again how to remove that spring clip, and then we'll get that pipe out of the way. When we do that, that should free up some more room here because I think that one's gonna fight us a little bit because it's a really long piece. The beauty is when we go to the CV, Vab, CV Fab piece, it's actually two pieces, so it's gonna be a lot easier to snake it in here. So what we'll do now is we'll get that cold pipe out of here, but we're gonna go ahead and unplug this guy. So we'll pull that white plug out, this white little stopper out. So then we can undo the sensor here. Then we have a pressure clip here, and these are pretty simple. You just pinch the sides and they pull like that. And then this guy, once I can get better grip on it, pops right off just like that. So now we're gonna use, I think these are eight millimeter uh, socket just to get this guy off the throttle body. Get the bottom portion, I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll pull our cold side pipe out. All right, so we're underneath the truck here. If you haven't already, go ahead and remove the skid plate because we are gonna need access to the back of the intercooler here. So here is the cold side inlet pipe or outlet pipe from the intercooler here. And there is a metal clip right here. So this little metal clip, it's pretty easy. You could use a pick tool to pry this up, but we're basically just gonna pop this clip tool or this rubber spring, cl or spring clip off and just put it on the collar of this joint. And then what we'll do is we'll go probably right about here. There's another hose clamp about midway on the cold pipe and we'll undo that. That way we could pull one section out on the bottom and one section out on the top so we got enough room. Let's see what room this gives us and then what uh, direction we go next on this guy. So we have our factory cold pipe here next to our CV fabrication. The CV one looks absolutely beautiful and you can see it's a much more even uh, mandrel bent pipe and it's gonna give us a much more laminar flow which is what we want. We don't want any turbulence going on by any sort of change in diameters or, or abrupt change in diameters because what you end up causing is, is eddies and you don't want that for your airflow. Now that we got this out of here, let's go ahead and take the sensor off of this, the factory pipe, and just go ahead and relocate that on here. There is a screw in the cold side pipe uh, hardware kit that you're gonna use once you remove the sensor, but this is a Torx T30 bit 
just set this screw back in here once you get the sensor off that way you don't lose it and then we're going to use the cv fabrication supplied hardware to reinstall the sensor here and then we're going to leave this kit off to the side and we're going to dive back in and see which one which hot side pipe we're going to dive into okay so now that we have our cold pipe set out to the side it's all set up the sensor was swapped over we're going to focus on the passenger side and here's the reason why so the passenger side hot pipe goes into the top of the intercooler if you remember, I was talking about how wild of a turn the driver's side one, the driver's side tube has to make, and the driver's side tube actually goes into the bottom of the intercooler. So I could get to the passenger side much easier, so I'm gonna get this guy out of the way because I think we're gonna need every bit of room to get that driver's side one out. So all I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and undo all the band clamps all along the passenger side one and just pull it off piece by piece and should pop straight out. So it goes right into the turbo down here on the side of the engine. And we're going to pull this pipe off. There's band clamps here. I'll probably undo, let's say, this one. Get this elbow and that straight piece off and then go underneath and then undo the band clamp that's holding this to the intercooler and then pull it out from the bottom probably. But remember, the passenger side hot pipe goes into the top of the intercooler. The driver's side hot pipe goes into the bottom of the intercooler. And once we get underneath the truck, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we are underneath the truck here. So if these two blue couplers look familiar, these are the backside of my intercooler here. So this pipe right here is for the driver's side. The pipe above it is for the passenger side. But like I said, because this has a wicked turn to it, we're gonna wanna remove that one out of the way on top so that this one is not gonna fight us when we go to remove it from the top. While I'm down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove both of these band clamps just to free up everything. I'll be able to pop off the passenger side pipe and that's the last piece that's hanging on on the passenger side and then we can turn our attention to this guy. All right, so here is the passenger side hot pipe here. I'm not totally sure on the orientation of this pipe if it flips or whatnot, but you can see here's the factory pipe, all plastic composite, you got rubber elbows. Now we're gonna replace with the CV fab stuff here. Looks great. It's gonna, like I said, it's gonna give us a much more laminar uniform flow through the pipe itself, which is good. Got this stuff up out of the way. We're gonna set the factory pipe aside. And now we're gonna turn our attention to the driver's side, which is right down in there. So I'm gonna start working through it. What I'm gonna do is take it off at the turbo and just kind of start taking off these front pipes right up here and then we'll figure out what's the best way to monkey out that bottom piece. All right, so I have the turbo inlet side of the driver's side undone. There is a pressure little pin here that you just need to pull the pipe up and it'll release it. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do here outside of touching parts that we're replacing is I'm gonna pull these two pressure lines off. That way, this pipe here can just pull straight up. It looks like I got plenty of room to pull that thing out as long as I remove these guys or at least get these guys freed up off here. And these are super easy to remove just like the other pressure clip. You just push these white clips in and then this whole pressure clip will come right off just like that. So we're gonna do that on both of these things to get those guys out of the way. And then we should be able to remove our driver's side pipe. This is awesome news because I thought this guy was gonna fight us. All right, and since I did it with the cold side and the passenger side, here is the driver's side next to, so OEM versus CV fab. I'm pretty sure this is the orientation of how everything goes in. I'm not 100% positive that that's the correct elbow. There's two elbows in the kit and it doesn't really say which side they go on. But what we'll do now is we'll drop this guy in place. I'm gonna reuse the blue silicone hose couplers on the intercooler. I really like the quality of those. The other thing I will say while I got this here is there's a couple plugs all along these pipes. If you're not going to use those for any sort of sensors, what you'll want to do is back those out, put some Teflon tape on them and crank them down so that you're not going to have any sort of boost leaks or whatnot. So once you do that, let's go ahead and drop that driver side bottom section in. Uh, reuse the factory clamp on the intercooler and then start the reinstall and everything else. All right, so after a lot of monkeying around, I figured out the correct orientation. Your real marker is these bungs. They actually go as close to the turbo uh, output side as possible. So you got one of those little ports here and then you got one up on that small elbow. So this is the driver's side. So the really wonky piece is the first piece out of the turbo and then you got that smaller elbow which goes right into the intercooler. On the driver's side, it's a little bit opposite. So you have the turbo inlet or the turbo outlet get, uh, coupler that goes into the elbow first and then it goes into the straight piece. I don't know if this is flipped upside down or whatnot, but this is 100% the orientation of everything. Again, the biggest thing is these little bungs here are closest to the output of the intake. My guess is they're for sensors and we'll figure that out because maybe we'll add some sensors down the road just for the hell of it. But this is the orientation. So oh, that took a while to figure out. Now that I got that figured out, now we're gonna go ahead and just reinstall everything. So I'm gonna start with the driver's side to get that guy put into place and then start with the passenger, or then finish with the passenger side. And then we'll do the uh, cold side right up the middle. 
uh, and I'll talk through the intricacies of that one because there's a little bit more to that other than just tightening couplers, but we'll get there when we get there. All right, so I have all the pipe in there. Everything's loosely installed. When you are reinstalling the CVF pipe, do not tighten any of the hose clamps down. Just position them where you need them. Uh, you're gonna need some play in these pipes as you connect the couplers along the way. So now that I have them where I want them at, I'm just gonna go back in there and tighten all the hose clamps down. It's gonna take quite a bit. And then we'll finish off with installing the cold side pipe here. So I went ahead and assembled some of it. So this is just the bottom elbow. This is what goes into the intercooler. This is what attaches to the bottom of the pipe. So remember you have this O-ring here. Before you install this O-ring, in this groove on the inside of the intercooler side of this pipe, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of grease on there. Again, just make sure that nothing dry rots once you install. It'll help it reinstall too on the intercooler. So a little bit of grease in here just to make sure everything's nice and lubed up. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall that. So let's get all of our hot pipes tightened down and then I'll install the cold pipe and we'll take one final look at everything before we fire up the truck. All right, quick recap. Everything is tightened down. It's not pretty yet. I'm gonna go ahead and align all the pipe clamps once I get everything in place in their kind of final resting home. By all accounts, everything is tightened down from the intercooler up to the turbo. So we're good on the hot pipes. Now what we're gonna do is finish assembling our cold pipe. So we already have our sensor relocated over here. There's a supplied hex head screw that you use that comes in the kit. It just pops right into a factory place. We got our two hose clamps. Now I've heard these are somewhat too big for the throttle body. So if we need to go back and use the factory ones, we will, but we'll start with the ones that came in the kit. And then I went ahead and greased up that O-ring and popped that guy into place. So this is the bottom portion that goes into the turbo. So what I'm gonna do is lower this guy in from above, pop him on the throttle body, tighten these guys down, or at least enough to hold everything in place, go up underneath the truck, slip this on the intercooler. This elbow is gonna attach right to the bottom of this pipe. And then it is smooth sailing from here on out. So. After you install this, make sure you install the sensor as well as that pressure line. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're doing everything and everything goes back into uh, its rightful home. Also, these pipes that you did remove for when you're removing the hot pipes, make sure those are reconnected. All right, so our cold pipe is fully installed. The correct way to do this is to get it lined up with the throttle body, drop the tube down below, put the metal portion of the intercooler pipe onto the intercooler, get your spring clip, make sure that's seated. And then that rubber elbow that connects the pipe to the actual intercooler piece is kind of where you're gonna be tightening everything up at. So that's kind of where you get a lot of play. Make sure you tighten the throttle body side first, then tighten or then make sure that spring clip is clipped onto the intercooler and then go back and do the elbow, which reminds me, I gotta go tighten those two down. There's two more band clamps down there. But everything else is tightened down. Um, one thing I will say, if you don't have a ratcheting impact like this or a ratcheting wrench somehow that can get into tight spaces, this is the time to do it. There are band clamps in this project and you will get carpal tunnel syndrome before you know it if you don't use a tool like that. Anyway, let me go down and get the rest of the uh, cold pipe band clamps tightened down. We'll throw the Y on here. You can see I already put the sensor back on. We put our pressure line back on too. Everything's cinched down. All right, so I got everything reinstalled and I have the battery plugged in. So we're good to go on that sense. Make sure before you plug the battery in, the two sensors that you did unplug were plugged in before you do that. So you unplugged one by the throttle body that was on the cold side pipe. And then if you did remove this Y pipe, which I don't see why you wouldn't, when you remove this, there's a sensor, there's that mass airflow sensor on the back or air temperature sensor on the back that you unplugged in order to get the Y pipe out of the way. Plug those in before you do the battery. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and start the truck up. I didn't put the skid plate back on yet because what I wanna do is start the truck up and just hop underneath, make sure nothing's leaking. Everything's tightened down as well as it can be, but project is done. We're gonna start it up, let it run for a little bit, and then I'm gonna take it for a test drive, make sure everything's good to go on that sense. I'll come back with my final, you know, my final opinion on the project, but by all accounts, it took about three and a half hours to finish the project. This is by myself, and that's me just trying to figure out the routing for those pipes. Probably took the longest. And I'll actually leave in the next sequence here a sequence of how I installed everything and kind of where they go. What you will notice is I don't have these installed. These are the couplers that you use if you are gonna attach them to the intercooler. I went ahead and used the factory ones, those blue ones. I really do like them because they have like a pipe clamp keeper on the end of it. So the pipe clamp always cinches down in the right spot. So anyway, perfectly fine to use those. 
let's go ahead and start the truck up. I'll get back with my final thoughts. And like I said, at the end of this video, I'll leave the sequence in terms of how I removed everything and then how I reinstalled. So if you need to do a screenshot and print it out and uh, it helps. All right, we're back from the test drive and everything is working 100% as it should. So I'm gonna hold off on my opinion of the performance so far because when you unplug your battery for a while, the transmission truck itself just needs to relearn your driving habits before it feels like the truck again. So I'll hold off on that. But one thing I will say is now that we have aluminum plumbing on the turbos tied into the intercooler, I'm I'm hearing the turbos more when I'm driving, which is pretty cool. So I didn't realize that that was gonna be one of the benefits here, but it is. So if you're interested in that, hey, the hot and cold pipe, probably more so the hot pipes in that case are allowing you to hear more turbos. But anyway, that is the install of the hot and cold pipes on the, the 2023 Raptor, the same instruction or same steps are gonna apply to the 2021 and newer, really all Gen 3s. Um, it was a little tricky, but it's totally doable. Be patient and definitely follow the next few steps that I'm gonna share here. And in terms of what you disassemble and what you assemble, hopefully that helps speed up your project. That said, I am a CV fab affiliate and I do have a coupon code. So if you use that code, you get 5% off your order and it helps the channel as well. So use that if you can, if not, whatever. Um, but I appreciate you all watching my video. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll happily answer them. And with that said, see you in the next one. Later.